Thank you, Mr. Williams, and a warm good afternoon to everyone. So this afternoon, again, it's my task to share with you the HEOC situation report for today, Wednesday, April the 14th. The Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis would have confirmed 44 cases of COVID-19, and all 44 cases have recovered. And so we have zero cases at present uh, being monitored and we hardly had any hospitalizations of any of these cases. Now, medical practitioners globally have been responding to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic for about 15 months. So now over this time period, uh, approximately 137 million persons have been confirmed with COVID-19 and 2.9 million persons have died. 31.4 million of these confirmed cases were reported by the United States of America alone, and over 563,000 of the deaths were reported by the U.S. In the Caribbean region, the numbers continue to climb uh, gradually. Now, within the CARICOM member states, uh, the CMS CARICOM member states collectively have reported over 147,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and over 2,300 deaths. Within the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, we've been monitoring the nine territories, and uh, at present, Collectively, the OECS states have reported over 11,509 confirmed cases and approximately 150 deaths. Like St. Kitts and Nevis, the other OECS territories have also rolled out their COVID-19 uh, vaccination program. As you can see, these are the approximate numbers of the first uh, vaccine doses that have been administered. Now, in St. Kitts and Nevis, we have rolled out our program. We rolled out our program on Monday, the February the 22nd, approximately seven weeks ago. Now, on the screen, you would see the data as at last evening. Uh, however, today's data just came in and we would have added a total of 194 doses to what's on the screen. So to date, we would have administered 11,152 doses, meaning the first um, dose uh, to, to, to 11,152 persons. Let me break this down, 8,385 doses were administered in kits, 2,767 doses in Nevis. And so to date, we would have provided coverage to 33.8% or say 34% of our target population. So we would have administered the first of two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine uh, to approximately 34% of the target population. Now, in terms of testing, within the Federation, we continue testing all suspected cases of COVID-19. So anyone who presents with uh, COVID-19-like symptoms, they are tested. So our surveillance program continues. Uh, to date, um, we would have conducted well over 13,000 tests. Over 13,000 persons have been tested to date, and the positivity rate is one of the lowest in the regions in terms of just about 0.3%. Uh, so this slide just shows that we've had uh, 44 recovered cases, no active cases being followed, and at present we only have approximately 267 persons in quarantine. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we continue to promote the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. It provides an, a coverage of about, it provides you 
uh, about 83% risk reduction in terms of your being able to pick up the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus and become uh, infected or with experiencing symptoms. We are presently using a dosing schedule of 10 weeks. So you receive the first dose and you'll be given a 10-week appointment to return. We are administering this vaccine to adults, persons over 18 years of age, uh, and it's proven to be quite effective against the emerging uh, SARS-CoV-2 variants that have been identified in the United Kingdom. It also provides uh, protection against the, the, the variant uh, identified in South Africa and Brazil. The most, some of the uh, most common post-vaccine symptoms, as highlighted by the uh, approximately 11,000 persons who have received the first dose so far, include tenderness at the injection site, uh, feeling cold or experiencing what we call chills, uh, mild fever relieved by ordinary paracetamol or acetaminophen, uh, feeling tired, unusually tired, body aches, and probably mild headache. So these are the most common post-vaccine symptoms uh, highlighted to date by our people. Now, uh, in the first allotment of vaccines that we received, we received 20,000 over 20,000 doses, and we would have uh, covered approximately 10,408 persons uh, so far from the first allotment of vaccines that we would have received. Uh, and so we, this is an achievement because we covered uh, this amount of persons well ahead of the cut date of April the 16th. And so this is a, a, a big achievement uh, for us here. Now, we would have received uh, the second allotment of vaccines last week, Wednesday, April the 7th. More specifically, we received 21,600 doses last Wednesday. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have already started administering these doses. Uh, in St. Kitts and in Nevis. And so if you are ready to accept this vaccine, all you have to do is to show up at any of the 17 health centers within the Federation. In St. Kitts, the vaccine is being offered in the afternoon hours between 1 to 4, 4.30 p.m. In Nevis, I gather that you can access the vaccine during the morning hours. So if you are ready, uh, there is universal eligibility, so that means we are no longer following the priority groups. Once you are ready, once you are over 18, you want the vaccine, you just have to show up uh, at any health center and you can access uh, the vaccine. Access to the COVID-19 vaccine is crucial to curbing the spread of this pandemic. Our aim in the Federation is to reach the herd immunity threshold by summer of this year. So what is this herd immunity threshold? The scientists tell us that the herd immunity threshold for COVID-19 is approximately or anywhere between 70 to 90%. So the specific cut point is still being determined, but we are given a range of 70 to 90%. And so given our age structure, uh, based on our last census for the Federation, we are aiming at attaining uh, population herd immunity threshold of 70% by summer of this year. And this is important because if we are successful in uh, vaccinating 70% uh, of our population, which indeed is our adult population, uh, those who would be vaccinated would provide indirect protection to the vulnerable amongst us. And these vulnerable include our children who are under 18 and our elderly, our frail old who have multiple medical conditions and who are unable to take this vaccine. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I implore you uh, to get the facts. Empower yourself with the facts about 
uh, the COVID-19 vaccine and the pandemic on a whole and choose the vaccination. It's our best shot at protecting ourselves. Now, uh, many are asking the question, how so? All right, so if you choose the vaccine uh, and you've received the two doses, two weeks after you would have received the second dose, you're deemed fully vaccinated. Now, that provides you protection against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It provides you protection against becoming against picking up the virus because you would have an 83% reduced risk of picking up the virus. If per chance you do, it reduces your risk of becoming ill, it reduces your risk of becoming very ill or severely ill, it reduces your risk of going to be uh, being hospitalized, going on the ventilator and dying. So it protects you. It protects your family. Because if you are vaccinated and your household, meaning all the members of your family or your household are protected, it means if the virus is circulating in your community, your family, your household will be protected. Now, if you were to say aim and if you were to advocate for the community members to be uh, vaccinated, it means if we have an outbreak of SARS-CoV-2, you will be protecting your community. So those communities who have come out and have come on board and accepted the vaccine, if we were to have a community outbreak, those communities will be spared. So you won't have many persons falling ill, you won't have many deaths. And by extension, if you accept the vaccine, you'll be protecting the Federation on a whole. We cannot forget the essential public health measures in terms of uh, these are the prevention and control measures for SARS-CoV-2. So yes, we still have to wear the face mask because our children are not being vaccinated. So some persons are asking, if I go and take the vaccine, why do I still have to wear the face mask? Because guess what? Everybody, the, the vaccine cannot be given to everybody. We still have those who are vulnerable amongst us, our children and our frail elderly. And so that's the reason why we must still continue wearing the face mask, maintaining hand hygiene, maintaining the safe distance away from others. These measures automatically and generally uh, prevents the spread of SARS-CoV-2 or any infectious disease for that matter. Thank you.